Welcome to CC Biology TCP. I am Mr. Wilson from the TCP Academy. You can find us online at tcp-academy.teachable.com. You may also find us on YouTube at CC Biology TCP. Today we're looking at the May June 2022 paper. And we're going to be releasing all the questions. Now we're looking at HSB paper two. And in this publication, we're going to be looking at question number one. Now, there's no time not to feel happy for everyone. So at this time, I'm going to be asking you to like, share, and of course, subscribe. And when you subscribe, please be reminded to click that notification bell and select all so you'll be notified as soon as there's a new publication. You want to also like this video that you'll be added to your playlist. So should it be turned off, you'd still have access to this video. You want to share this video, some more videos like this will come to you. You want to leave us a comment, tell us where you're watching the video from, and if possible, which school you're watching. I want to invite you to my crash courses that comes up every weekend before the exam or our marathon, but you want to make sure that you put in all that you've got before the exam to ensure that you pass. Without further ado, let me hop right into question number one of May June 2022 exams. Last year, many students differed on their CXC exams as they were afraid of failure due to their level of readiness. This year, Mr. Wilson and his experienced team from tcpacademy.teachable.com is here to help you get exam ready. Subscribe for free to tcp-academy.teachable.com. We offer courses in CXC Biology, HSB, English Language, and many others. There are several offerings to each course. Enroll in one today. Figure 1 shows an image of a blood smear. Identify the blood component labeled A and state its function. So if we were supposed to look at it, um, A here is going to be the platelet. This here is going to be the white blood cell, not a white blood cell. And of course, these that are pretty much in large numbers are going to be our red blood cell. This is easy to know. You know that red blood cells are biconcave This There's no nucleus. So this would pretty much give us a white with a light shining through that sort of a thing. We we'll get that there. So for A, it's going to, of course, be our platelet. What's the function of a platelet? It helps the blood to clot whenever there's a cut or wherever there's a wound. Identify the most abundant cell shown. Now the most abundant cell shown in this slide is going to be our red. Say the main function of a cell identified in BI and give two ways in which it is adapted for its function. Well, it main, the main function here is to transport oxygen. It's also true that it transports carbon dioxide, but it acts as here for the main function. Now, adaptation is that it's a biconcave disc with a thin center that allows for easy diffusion of the gases. Now, it has no nucleus, and this, of course, increases the available space for the transportation of oxygen. It is also true that it contains hemoglobin. Table 1 and Table 2 show the number of males and females aged 18 to 50 years who tested positive for the herpes simplex type 2 virus and a human papillomavirus HPV, respectively, in a certain country. Table 1, males and females with herpes simplex type 2, well illustrated. Then we have table 2 with male and female, human papillomavirus HPV, which pretty much leads to a type of cervical cancer. Identify the age group among males which had the highest incidence of herpes simplex type 2. Let's roll right back to that table. There we're seeing 190 for the male. Not the female now, male. So that's going to be the age group is going to be 18 to 25. That's the range. Explain why a high incidence of herpes simplex type 2 in the age group identified in C 
I would be a public health concern. Now, the first thing we need to figure out, what is a public health concern? What do we define a public health concern to be? Now, a public health concern refers pretty much to a disease that affects a large number of the population. And here, 18 to 25 is pretty much the younger part of our population. So if we're going to be losing these persons to disease, you understand that a country would be preparing for a fall. Now, it has no cure. This disease has no cure. And we have to also take in consideration the age. There's no vaccine either for the disease. Now, affected individuals suffer from recurring genital blister and ulcers and even itching of the genital. Now, the disease is transmitted by unprotected sex. Now, it being a public health concern would pretty much help us to make measures available that can be employed to reduce the number of persons affected and possibly stop the transmission. So the age group here, the fact that so many persons are affected, the way the disease is transmitted, and public health concern giving us that opportunity to pretty much try to curtail the transmission of a disease. A little wordy, but of course, covers nicely that which we need. Based on the data in Table 2, state whether the human papilloma virus is more prevalent in males or females. Now, this is going to be an easy one, and it can be solved probably two ways. One, you could look at 160 is more than 125, 115 is more than 105, 160 is more than 140, and 80 is, of course, less than 95. But overall, you'd see that uh, human papilloma virus is more prevalent in female. Now, you could also add up the band. And when you add the band here, you get 465. When you add the band here, you get 515, which makes it more prevalent among females. So the virus is more prevalent among females. Explain how the high prevalence of human papilloma virus among males and females can impact the economy of a country. Now, when we do the questionnaire for the human and social biology questionnaire, we usually ask for the effects or pretty much the impact of whatever we're studying. And in some cases, we break it into three parts. Well, I do for my students. Uh, we look at the social, we look at the environmental, and we look at the economical. Now, here it is looking at the economical aspect of this disease and the economical aspect could pretty much be almost the same thing for almost most of the things that we're studying so here on your questionnaire these are things that you could add that we have here now the high prevalence of this disease uh, could pretty much affect the country in a way that it leads to job loss as person becomes sick and unable to work and all that sort of a thing it could, of course, reduce the productivity. If persons are not working, then persons become less productive. And if people even go to work, they might not be able to work because of the pain. I can speak to this particular disease as I have employed a person suffering from the disease. and I have first a knowledge of pretty much um, how frightening or painful a persons who suffer from this disease, uh, how painful it can be to them. Reduce foreign exchange. Now, if you are a company exporting and your workers are not coming to work, then you understand that you will not be able to export. So that's less foreign exchange for you, ultimately less foreign exchange for the company. Now, as I spoke about individual who would have worked with me, the individual would have passed and at a pretty young age. So, of course, this is reduced life expectancy. So a person would, who, based on the Bible, would live for till about 70. Uh, this person could die pretty early, even before reaching 40s or 30s or 20s, uh, the, the, the late 20s or anywhere there. Uh, if a person become infected by this dreaded disease, human papillomavirus. Might I say, even though it's not on the paper, that uh, females are usually vaccinated. In Jamaica, it is free. You can get vaccinated before age 21. I'm not too sure why age 21. I am assuming that they're thinking that is when a person becomes really sexually active. 
while you're in high school in Jamaica, your parents can give consent and you will be vaccinated for um, the human papilloma virus. Let's continue with this question. So having looked at those, it is also true that these will ultimately lead to an unstable labor force if this disease is not curtailed, which may affect the country's GDP and the ability to pay salaries and pretty much service loan. So you know that this just by this little disease, if it's not curtailed, what is going to happen that eventually so many persons might become affected by the disease that it become a problem to the country, might even cause riots and cause the country to become unstable, have unstable economy, uh, just can't pay the land, become a failing state. This brings us to the end of question number one. If you have not yet liked, share, or subscribe, it is definitely time for you to do so. When you subscribe, hit the notification bell so you'll be notified as soon as there is a new publication. You want to also like this video that will be added to your playlist so that if this video becomes turned off, you'll still have access to it. Share the video so more videos of this type will come to your inbox better. Uh, helping you to ace that examination. Now you want to watch the video to the very end that there are going to be some end cards on the end of the screen that you can click to find more past papers that are answered and HSB, biology, and agriculture. As I usually say, remember to study to show thyself approved. And you want to make sure that you join me, Mr. Wilson, our crash course before the exam we are having a crash course every weekend in the month of may up to your exam we actually started in april so they are still have enough time to get ready for the exam you need to whatsapp us the number will be on screen get help with csec biology sba labs and human and social biology sba labs at tcp-academy.com Oh. Tim had questions. He wanted to know where he could get help in his SPA labs. His parents searched but could not find that experience. Tim also made some calls however could not find the help he needed. Tim needed an experience he could trust to help him get over the hurdle of SBAs as success was in sight. He met the guides from tcp-academy.teachable.com and they designed a program to help him. tcp-academy.teachable.com was able to help him. So too, they can help you. Sign up tcp-academy.teachable.com for help with your SBAs in biology and human and social biology.